Thomas Messick Sr. was 82 years old when he went missing on the 15th of November 2015. The disappearance of this seasoned hunter in the dense wilderness of the Adirondack Mountains in the state of New York has baffled search and rescue professionals and investigators alike. Tom was an ex-paratrooper and an experienced outdoorsman who walked into the woods south of Brant Lake near Lily Pond with six of his friends and family members. They set out to pursue deer and bring back the spoils, but during this outing, he would never be seen again. Tom had always been known as a highly competent man that had a lot of practical skills in life, not just in the outdoors, but was something of a handyman too. His loved ones described him as a fiercely independent person who was loved and popular in the community. It seems that he was a very friendly and a well-liked person all round. Calling Tom a seasoned hunter isn't overselling his abilities either. He'd been doing this for many long years and had taught his three sons how to do it. He'd also help and teach others how to navigate and hunt successfully in wilderness areas in order to help them get their license. All in all, those nearest to him said that he was unbelievably good in the woods. With that being said though, in his older age, he wasn't without problems anymore. Tom sadly had an accident years prior that made him blind in one eye, and his eyesight in general wasn't so great anymore anyway. It was a similar story with his hearing too, and based on what I can find online, I believed he required hearing aids at this stage. Moving to the day in question, he and his six companions, comprised of friends and family, set out towards Brant Lake for the first time. They all had walkie-talkies, but had never hunted in this area before now, and he, along with the other three older members of the group, set up shop at the bottom of a hill. Their role was to be what's known as a watcher. They are stationary, and the plan was that the three younger members of the group were to go around the hill, before coming back up over and down the hill towards the watchers. The idea was to push any deer they could find down the hill towards the watchers who would then bring the hunt to a close. They initiated this plan at 12pm. Strangely, on this day, there were no deer in the area. In fact, according to those present in the group, they never saw any wildlife at all, which was described as odd, not only by the group, but by other personnel who would later be involved in the search and investigation. This is one element of the situation as a whole that many believe makes the disappearance just that much more odd, because there was perhaps this element of unusualness to the area. Now, the four watchers were said to be spaced apart somewhere roughly between 150 to 200 yards from one another at the bottom of this hill. The area was forested, so I don't believe that they were able to see one another and each of them took the role as watcher seriously as they are an integral part to the whole process. Without them, the whole plan would have just fallen apart. Tom's family, present and otherwise, as well as his friends, stated very clearly that he would not just have up and left his post. Yet, when the three younger members arrived at the bottom of the hill, without being able to find and head any deer at all, they made their way towards the watcher's general position and over the walkie-talkies, stated that they'd had no luck and it was time to meet back up where they'd parked the vehicles. At 2pm, everyone began to make their way there, and they all met up again at the trucks, all that is, except for Tom. What's weird about this is that Tom never used his radio to signal for help or anything to that effect. As the remaining six waited patiently at the trucks, they quickly realised that something was wrong, the three older members, I believe, stayed by the trucks while the other three re-entered the forest in the direction of Tom's watch position. They went right to that exact spot where Tom was stationed and saw nothing. He wasn't there, and there wasn't any kind of an indication as to where he might have gone. Just for the sake of clarity, all of his equipment was gone too. Everyone was dumbfounded, as they didn't believe that he would have just gotten lost, and from what I can tell, this had never happened before. There was no evidence of animal predation or some kind of attack. Everyone split up, 
and one of the men at the trucks drove their way out of the area to call for help, which was achieved at 4.30pm. Meanwhile, the men inside the forest were trying to make as much noise as possible to get Tom's attention. They called for him, they ejected shells towards the sky to help Tom locate them, but none of it worked. They never saw or heard anything. This search went on for four hours until darkness began to fall and last light came at around 7.30pm. It was at this point that they realised they needed to change strategy and instead they got in their trucks and began to drive up and down the roads with their high beams on while honking the horn. They fully believed that they were going to find him, they just assumed now that he must have wandered off in the wrong direction. As the professional search and rescue members arrived, their effort began and as more and more time went on, things began to look bleak and no one had any idea as to what happened to him. Search dog teams were going in from all different positions. They went right up to his exact last known position where he was sat waiting for the deer. The dogs couldn't find a scent leading out of there. To everyone searching, this didn't make sense. The whole forest area, including areas that were further out, were grid searched extensively over and over again without producing a single result. It was almost as if he'd vanished exactly from the spot he was sitting down and left absolutely no trace behind at all. As said, there were no signs of animal predation and Tom was getting on in life now, so it's not like he could walk any kind of extreme distance at this point in his life. How, in this situation, was it that he was able to evade hundreds of searches? It almost doesn't even seem feasible, yet there everyone was, completely unable to find even a hint of him. There was another oddity to this whole incident too, in addition to the complete lack of animals in the area. As the three younger members were making their way around and up the backside of the hill, another watcher who was waiting at the bottom of said hill stated that he heard something weird. He said that he heard a sound that he found difficult to describe. He said that it was completely out of place in the woods and he hadn't heard anything quite like it before while out in the wilderness. He said that this sound was quick, it didn't linger and wasn't present for long at all. This man believes that the sound emanated from the direction of the hill that the other three younger members were to ascend. He stated that if he had to guess, it originated around 150 yards away in the direction of the hill, which of course would also be 150 yards or so away from all of the other watchers roughly in the direction that they were all facing. While trying to describe the sound, it was stated as being like a snap or crack sound somewhat like a big trap closing or something similar. Sadly, I couldn't find any further extrapolation or description of this sound, but what is interesting is that under Sheriff, Sean Lamore, who was present during this ordeal, also stated that the whole area seemed to be devoid of any wildlife, and he too said that was very odd. One can only assume then, that presumably means that wasn't typical or to be expected in this area. State forest rangers and volunteer searchers returned Tuesday to deep woods around Lily Pond to resume the search for Tom. Volunteers worked with rangers but found no clues as to his whereabouts as of late Tuesday afternoon. Search leaders estimated 130 or so people were involved in the initial search. The area being searched is remote, big country. There are miles of trails and very little in the way of civilization between Brant Lake and Lake George. Ranger and state troopers, aided by dogs and a state police helicopter, have searched since the day of the disappearance to no avail. This is interesting right off the get-go, because Tom was wearing camouflage clothing, which the search leaders took note of and said that it would likely be difficult to see him. One might assume then, that is why they brought in a large search dog presence immediately, because while camouflage might make it more difficult to see him, it wouldn't interfere with the ability of the dogs to use scent to sniff him out from wherever he was. However, and as was said earlier, to everyone's surprise, the dogs simply could not find a scent anywhere in the immediate area of Tom's disappearance. It seems as though there was just nothing for them to follow. They searched, 
and researched the same area leading away from his last known position in all directions in a grid-like manner and they only fanned out from there covering further ground. Searchers said that they had to wade through some particularly harsh terrain. They went through swamps that would reach up to their chests, but even so, he just wasn't to be found in any of these more harsh areas either. It seems that his family didn't believe that Tom would have entered these areas in the first place, because as said earlier, and despite his age, Tom was actually very good in these kinds of areas. His family stated that his general common sense was very good, and had he have been in any kind of trouble, he would have tried to reach his companions. One, through means of the walkie-talkie, or two, by ejecting shells towards the sky, as the other men tried to do initially to help guide Tom back to them. None of this happened though. It seems as though Tom never used the radio, or at least none of the men ever heard from him, and they never heard the latter either. Four days into the search, a couple of FBI tactical officers arrived at the scene of the disappearance, who stated that they were there to provide some or other kind of technological support. There was a lot of confusion surrounding their presence because they generally do not involve themselves in a missing persons case unless there is evidence to suggest that a crime has been committed. Though I do believe that there is more leeway when it comes to a missing young person. I actually found some direct quotes on this from a former FBI agent of 26 years named Jerry Williams. Here's what she had to say. Just because an adult has gone missing doesn't make it a crime that requires a response from law enforcement. People are allowed to just walk away from their former lives to start a new life without telling anyone of their plans. However, if there is evidence that indicates their disappearance may have been the result of foul play, a missing persons case will be initiated by law enforcement. The FBI will officially open and lead a missing person investigation when one, foul play is suspected and the person's last known whereabouts was on federal property, or two, the missing person is a US official elected or otherwise appointed. Most often, the FBI's participation in a missing person case is based on a request for assistance from local law enforcement or the state among others. This is interesting because Jerry says specifically that foul play must be suspected for them to get involved, and two, that their participation is usually based on a request from those already investigating, essentially. In this instance, there was absolutely no evidence left behind whatsoever to suggest any form of criminality had taken place. I also couldn't find anything to confirm that their presence had been requested. So, why were they there? Tom's wife said that these agents told her that they felt that something was definitely not right about this disappearance. It's not clear to me exactly what they meant by that. They followed up with her by saying that they wouldn't know what was not right about it until a body was located. I can see what they're getting at though. You have an elderly man that shouldn't have been able to get very far, and yet he somehow managed to disappear so thoroughly that the dogs, nor thermal imaging equipped helicopters, could even find a hint of him. Thus, I suppose you can only reason that may be precisely why they showed up to investigate. You have an incident that makes no sense whatsoever. You have this elderly man that had vanished without a trace and nothing was being uncovered. Searchers did expect to find at least a trace of him. They stated that animals generally do not touch or move the equipment that he was carrying, and those items wouldn't have degraded over time. Perhaps these odd elements of the disappearance led them to believe or suspect that Tom had been taken by some kind of third party. How on earth this would have looked in the middle of the woods, I have absolutely no idea. I obviously agree with the investigators assessment that animal predation had not occurred in this situation. There would have been signs all over the place had that been the case. There was no disturbed ground, no drag marks, no shredded clothing or anything else. It was as if he'd been taken from that spot. If a third party taking Tom was in fact the running private hypothesis or suspicion, it seems to me that something must have happened when the younger three were ascending the hill. It must have happened before the entire group made radio contact with one another 
because as far as I can tell, no one at any stage heard from Tom. So it seems to me at least, Tom had already vanished somehow before the group had made their way down the hill. It seems that had he have just wandered away, firstly, there would have been some radio contact, or he'd have used his equipment as a means of getting people's attention. And secondly, I firmly believe that this search effort would have uncovered him had that have been the case. So the ultimate question then is, I suppose, were the FBI fully aware that the circumstances did not make sense and that there was an air of unusualness to this whole case? Is that why they were there? If that is the case, that means that to some degree, they may very well be aware of some of the more unusual disappearances that have been covered over the years. Or they actually did just suspect foul play, but never really made that explicitly clear for whatever reasons they had. State Forest Rangers, State Police, Warren County Sheriff's Office personnel, State Conservation Officers, Volunteers and FBI Tactical Officers spent a fourth day searching for Tom but found no clues as to his location. They planned to go until Dark Wednesday and resume Thursday despite a rainy forecast. David Winchell, a spokesman for the State Department of Environmental Conservation, said the searchers expanded the area that was being searched Wednesday to include area they had not looked over earlier in the week. These areas were further out and they didn't actually believe Tom could have made it there, but because they had already scoured the area extensively at this point, it seems to me that they were running out of options and had to try something, anything. The weather actually quite suddenly became worse two days prior on the second day of the search and everyone involved had to endure quite heavy rains beating down on them as they looked for him. This of course slows down the search effort in general, makes it more difficult, and it obviously becomes more dangerous too. At some point in the search, I'm not quite sure when, but people were said to be dumbfounded by the set of circumstances that they were presented with and questioned whether Tom might have gotten out of the woods, arrived at a road, and then perhaps may have been involved in an accident. All of the roads, which each were quite the trek from Tom's last known position, were searched, and still there was nothing to suggest this outcome. Searchers then said that they'd covered almost every inch of ground, standing almost shoulder to shoulder while walking in large lines throughout the grid layout of the forest, and Tom was just not present. During this time, divers also entered Lily Pond, all nearby streams and swamps, and still never found anything. This search was massive. It included hundreds of people from over 60 jurisdictions who all wanted to help. Experienced search dog teams were provided from all over the place, and as mentioned already, helicopters had been overhead the entire time. Sean Lamore noted that the whole ordeal was odd because you'd think that they would have found some trace of him, but as we've been over, this didn't happen. I found this quote, which shares a similar thought to the one I expressed earlier. Messick's disappearance has confounded searchers who can't figure out how a man with extensive health problems could have gotten far enough or gotten to a secluded enough spot to have not been found by dozens of trained searchers for nearly a week at this point. It's important to say also that locals, searchers, Tom's friends, family and companions that day all expressed how odd this situation was, which I thought spoke volumes about this particular disappearance. No one seemed to have any great hypotheses, including the FBI agents who told Tom's wife only that they felt something was definitely not right. I know that some may feel that because of all the circumstances we've discussed so far, that the companions he was with must have had something to do with it, but there was just no evidence in support of that. The group Messick was with have been assisting with the search every day, Simpson said. They were questioned by state police the day after Messick was reported missing, and investigators said there is no indication of foul play. The men had been together from a camp near Hague, but had not been around Lily Pond before. I personally do not believe that his companions had anything to do with his disappearance. The official search for Tom ended on the 26th of November 2015, 11 days after he vanished, but volunteers did continue after this time until it was realised by more and more people that he was just not going to be found. 
Though I believe that a small handful of people did search every so often through the years and still never found anything. Forest Ranger Rick Schroeder said, We thought we'd find him that night, and if not that night, the next day. Rangers with global positioning satellite receivers went through shoulder to shoulder. They checked woods, thick brush, sides of mountains, swamps and ponds to no avail. An area of 8,000 acres had been searched and more than two weeks later, not a clue as to where Messick went has been located. Schroeder said, we're going to maintain a presence there. It's baffling. We won't know what happened until we find him. Two months after Tom vanished, searchers are no closer to determining where he went. And a family member said that they have no theories of what could have happened to him. David Winchell said, there's nothing new, our guys are stumped. Tom's son, Thomas Messick Jr. said that the family has no idea what could have happened. The State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigation looked into the companions early on and concluded nothing was amiss. The investigators who interviewed the witnesses know their stuff and if there had been anything strange there, I'm confident they would have sniffed it out. Finally, there was a relatively popular sinkhole hypothesis that spread in relation to this disappearance. Water running underground can cause erosion, which can result in a sinkhole. The idea goes that one must have formed over time in his general vicinity. He'd unknowingly applied his weight to it, which caused it to collapse and swallow him, which would then have been quickly covered by earth. The response to this idea generally seems to be that evidence of such a sinkhole would have been found given how extensively the area was searched, especially the point from which Tom was sitting. I don't know enough about sinkholes to make any relevant comments about that other than sharing the general gist of that little back and forth. Ultimately for me, I think the key lies in the fact that there was an FBI presence to a disappearance in the woods in which there was absolutely no sign or evidence of foul play at all. Either they were in possession of further evidence or information that was just never shared publicly which pointed in the direction of foul play, or there was another reason they were there. Interestingly, if there was information that they were privy to, it doesn't seem like they made the sheriff's office aware only stating that they were there to provide technological support. That's the real oddity to me, especially when you pair it with the other, somewhat ominous factors. Why was there a total lack of wildlife in the area at the time, which was reported by numerous sources who were in the area? That being, the actual group of seven, or now six, that came back. And the undersheriff also made a note of that later. And this odd, quick noise that was heard, what was that? It was said to be completely out of place. Was there a link between the source of this noise and the lack of an animal presence? It's understandable why there might have been a lack of wildlife during the search. I imagine a large presence of people would scare them away, but I'm not sure why beforehand. Perhaps there were other groups out also on the day of or before the disappearance that were loud and scared a lot of the wildlife away? I've no idea. Anyway, I've reached a point now where I'm just speculating and it seems that I've exhausted most of the information in regards to Tom and the disappearance. So, I'm going to hand it over to you in the comments below. What are your thoughts here? I'd just like to take the time to thank you for watching and a big thank you to the patrons who I'm very grateful for and who've been running around on the screen. Thank you all very much for helping me to make these videos. If you found the video interesting, then please do leave a like, hit the bell, and subscribe if you haven't already, it helps me an awful lot. If not, then feel free to leave a dislike, I'm just looking for your honest opinion either way. I hope that you've had a great day, or evening, depending on where you are, and I'll see you in the next one. Be safe guys, peace.